as oral historian to the Waimati Historical Society, I was asked to record both Eric Batchelor and Irene Ollerinshaw concentrating on their war experiences. After completing their stories, I realised that they both were in the same war zones at the same time, but performing very different duties. One older, with nursing experience, and the other young and looking for adventure, but both coming from a quiet town in New Zealand to help win a war on the other side of the world. Eric's job was to fight the enemy, Irene's to care for the wounded. Their accounts and reactions, told in their own words, of events thousands of miles from home, left lasting impressions with them. Asking Eric how you adapt, he replied, you just get on with it. The following extracts from their stories give you an idea how they and many others just got on with it. War was declared on the 3rd of September 1939, so I put my age up a few years and joined the army. I said I was 22. I just decided. I didn't discuss it with my family because I thought I should make up my own mind and not make them responsible for making me go. We sailed to Colombo and stayed there 10 days because they were seeing how the battles went in Greece and Crete. Thank the good Lord they did send us to Egypt. The leaving had been rushed and the boys had their injections at the last moment. The sea was rough and they had reactions. They were in their beds down on the ship, young, scared and worried. We had quite a bit of nursing to do. There's not much to say about working in the desert. You did your training in the sand, then you dug your slit trenches and lived in them. In the desert, we did not know where we were going. We never did. We were close to the front and there was a railway line and road not far from us. The planes would come over and we never knew what they would do. Once they blew the road up and we had shrapnel in the camp. It was such a worry because we would not have had a hope of getting the wounded out. Most of them were in heavy splints. When we got to Fort Capuzzo, we watched the Germans come right round the horizon. Hundreds and hundreds of trucks, but no tanks, so we were lucky. They were within 50 yards of the dugout I was in. I jumped up and yelled and shot the bastard. Somebody behind me fired and I took a rebound bullet in the arm. It was the first time I got a look at the Germans. I got a good look at them. And they were human, same as us. The sandstorms were terrible. You couldn't see anything and there was no water laid on to wash. The water cart came round and we filled our bottles. We would use that for washing. Everything was done on a primus stove, including sterilising. In our tent, we each had a primus for heating. Water was the trouble. Half a water bottle a day. The only time you had a decent drink was first thing in the morning when the water was cold. Wash, you didn't. Shave, you did. As far as the boys were concerned, they had a better Christmas than they had expected. On Christmas Eve, the nurses sang carols, the patients enjoying them, especially the Italians who were weeping. They are all so emotional and seem to weep easily. The Tommies in our ward remarked how well the New Zealanders were looked after by their own people. We always got our posts very regularly, also our Red Cross parcels. Everybody shared whatever they had. We had a section box between well, 10 or 12 people. No matter what you got, it all went into that and you shared it out. The same happened to the parcels of the deceased. It went to his section or platoon and was split up that way. The thing that really worried us were the flies. They were terrible. When you had a meal, they were all over you on the food, anywhere they were attracted to. There were cases of yellow jaundice. This was caused by flies, millions of them. 
They used to call us fly happy because we would wave our hands about in front of our faces all the time. We had to move our patients and go on the train. It was late at night with very little notice and we had no idea where we were going. There were four in a carriage and we had the primus on the floor to make the tea. El Alamein was quite a battle. I had to walk through a big minefield. I can still remember a 500 pound bomb with about six wires hanging out of it. We were stepping over each one as we went. The lights from the guns and searchlight helped to illuminate it. I can still remember that minefield. On our days off, we would walk around Nazareth in the streets. The meat was out on trays, covered in flies. The desert is not sand, the desert is rock and sand. If you had to dig a trench, you could only get down about six inches. When a bomb or shell came over, you went down another six inches. Overhead came a flight of enemy bombers. I was staring up, half asleep, and I thought, what's all those black things falling from them? Then I woke up that they were bombs. I didn't have time to get into the slit trenches, so I rushed to the nearest pile of blankets and wrapped them round my head. One landed 50 feet away, but didn't go off. Coming from the desert and going towards Galilee, the hills were just covered in flowers. We hadn't seen flowers for so long. We would pick big bunches of them. It was so silly. We had nowhere to put them. Tack Runner was a bit of a shambles. The battalion I was with got cut off. The night the commander gave me a job as a runner. Right, bachelor, he said. You will go through and find the rest of the battalion and come back and tell us. I had to go through this gully, a narrow defile. I don't want to tell you what I felt like. It was fighting all around. I was scared as hell, absolutely terrified. I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. I just had to follow the sounds of the battle. I found the other half of the battalion and the commander sent me back and we brought them through. We were very worried about what was happening in the desert. We were getting a lot of wounded, treating them and getting them onto ships as fast as we could. It was while we were there we were told we were going home on furlong. We got home in July or August and oh, it was so cold. We felt the cold as we were not as fit as we could have been. There was a big fuss when we got home. It was December before we left for Italy. We left from Alexandra and landed at Toronto. The weather was atrocious. Rain, wet, oh hell it was terrible. We were first introduced to red wine there. The boys took a four gallon jerry can down to a winery and filled it up. The only trouble was it tasted of petrol. On the way back from New Zealand and South Africa, Durban, we picked up patients on their way back to England. They had lost their sight on the battlefield. They were very bright, although it must have been terrible for them. We had lifeboat drill, and you only had to show them once, and they would feel around the walls and count. They were wonderful. We often wondered what it would be like for them when they got home and lost the support of each other. At Sangro, we had our first big battle in Italy. Three of us were ordered to cross the river one night to see if we could find any Germans. The engineers had laid ropes across the river for us. It was chest deep. You were soaked, but you didn't notice the cold. We did not find any Germans, so came back for the attack. There was heavy shelling and the bridge was destroyed. Our whole company had to wade the river and they must have felt the cold more than I can say. They took us right across country to Monte Cassino. The bombings made it worse, too many big potholes and the tanks couldn't get through. The infantry had to go through and occupy what was left of the houses. We lived underneath a house that had been bombed no roof, nothing. At night, the runners would bring us food. I think they had a worse job than us, as they had to move through occupied territory. You see, sometimes the Germans would only be a few feet away, sometimes in the next room. 
We shifted very often, most often at night. We would have two nurses to an ambulance and we would sit in the front with our primus. We would stop by a paddock of sweet corn and cut some, being very careful. They could have been booby-trapped. We would put it in a bucket and stand it on the primus to cook. We did not lose too many of the platoon I was in, not as many as we did in North Africa. You see, in Italy, you always had somewhere to hide in or behind or somebody's old cow bale. Unlike the desert, there was always some place to go. We went to Casino. Nothing like the number of patients we anticipated. It was such a slaughter. We had a few German patients. Gosh, they were scared stiff. They were only young. We had to put tubes down their throats for stomach wounds. They had been told we would drown them doing this. It was terrible for them. The casualties would come in at night. There would be a line of ambulances coming in. They would have been seen by the first aid people who would pin a ticket on them with details of their wounds and any treatment. There was an English hospital nearby. They would take the soldiers one night and we would take them the next. I was 20 yards from a house when a German soldier ran from room to room. I went in after him, through the door, and he fired and missed. I was out that door and round the back yelling to my men. One went to the corner of the house and the other two went inside. All this happened in a few minutes. I went to the front of the house and yelled, Bring out your prisoners! Well, I very nearly dropped. They brought out 19. We chased them across a paddock, firing the odd bullet just to make them move. One big red-haired German laughed all the way. I think he saw the funny side of it. I didn't. Our hospital had shifted to outside Naples. We would go to the opera. We would go in the back of a truck. The opera houses were very nice, but they had been let go a lot. It was an interesting life. You forget most of it. You try and forget the bad bits. You never forget the funny bits. Even during the action, the person next to you might get killed. You say, ah, poor bugger, he's had it. Well, there's nothing you can do. It didn't stop you from worrying, though. You had moments of abject fear. You really knew what fear is. That's when you say your prayers. When the peace treaty was signed, the Italians were in a prison camp near us. They were excited. So hilarious. We were confined to barracks for safety. Up to a point you get used to the terrible injuries and death, but they were so young. I was awarded an MBE. I'm not sure what it was for. I suppose it was for everything. I was awarded a DCM in bar for my efforts, but without good blokes behind you watching your backside, you don't get anything, and they were very good blokes. I was probably luckier than most, I could shut off. Sometimes it's worse now when you look back. You think a lot about it at night. We did what we had to do. When I went back to El Alamein, the first graves I saw were of three blokes who were killed beside me. You fought with these people, but I don't think I ever thought they were really dead. To go back and see their names on the stone, you knew 